Many of us know one person in our family with diabetes. Food prices last month were 3.9% higher than they were a year ago. I mean, a culture that just views a pig as a pile of protoplasmic inanimate structure to be manipulated by whatever creative design the human can foist on that critter. Hi, my name is Coralie Charial, and I've just launched my new film series called Reactive Film, and I'm going to be picking documentaries that are issue-based, such as the environment, uh, gun control, AIDS, children. I'm doing this so we can create a discussion that starts in the screening room and that continues outside the screening room. Here is a Q&A with Eric Schlosser, who is the executive producer of Food Inc. I'm a mother of two, as I told everybody already a hundred times, because I just had a baby, so I'm super proud. But there's a part in the movie um, where the little boy of two years old passes away of E. coli. And I want to know as a mother, what can I do about that? And how does it, oft, does it actually happen often? And how can, how can I protect my child from those things happening? Well, it happens too often. And you will never have food that is perfectly safe. And it would be insane to want to live in a world that was germ free. And there's just always going to be foodborne illness. But there are certain basic things that we can be doing in this society that we're not, which is, you know, Kevin's law essentially mandates uh, microbiological testing of the meat. And if the meat reaches a certain level of contamination, it can be withdrawn from the market. Our food safety advocacy work started uh, six years ago when my two and a half year old son, Kevin, was stricken with E. coli 157H7. It used to be that type 2 diabetes only affected adults, and now it's affecting children at epidemic proportions. I would like to ask, in the film there was a mention, I don't remember exactly what it was, that the growth, about the growth of diabetes that it, is expected. Could you, uh, you know, elaborate on that? Yeah, I mean, early onset diabetes used to be extremely, extremely rare and there's a diabetes specialist, a pediatric diabetes specialist I've got to know that said when he was in medical school if there was a young child with diabetes with, with type 2 early onset diabetes all the doctors would go to the bedside because it was just such a rare thing and the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention now estimates that one out of every three children born in the year 2000 will develop diabetes mm -hmm. and there's been no genetic change in our population it's a dietary change and lack of exercise. We eat a lot of oil without knowing it. To bring a steer to slaughter, you know, it's like 75 gallons of oil. So what we're seeing is that this highly efficient machine does not have the resilience to deal with shocks such as the spike in oil prices. When we run an item past the supermarket scanner, we're voting for local or not, organic or not. At Walmart, we made a decision about a year ago to go through a process of becoming RBST free in our milk supply. Uh, we made that decision based on customer preference. Individual consumers changed the biggest company on earth, and in so doing, probably put the last nail in the coffin for synthetic growth hormone. This whole new vibe of the organic. Now, I want to know, tell me, is it really, when it says organic on the product, is it very organic or is it just another marketing strategy? Um, tell me more about the word organic and what it really means. You know, I think if you buy, if you go to Whole Foods, you go to the market and it's been grown or produced in America and it says organic on it, most likely it is organic. Uh, if it's been imported, if it's from China, if you don't know where it's originated, that, there are definitely people who are selling things as organic which aren't because the markup is so high, it's a very profitable thing to do. Um, and I'm a big supporter of organics, especially when little kids are involved because little kids are the most vulnerable to these dangerous foodborne pathogens, they're the most vulnerable to pesticide residues, etc. So if you have little kids, Organic is important, especially organic dairy products, because you don't even want to know what's in the non-organic dairy products. But organic, you know, only tells you um, one part of the story. Organic means, basically, 
that there weren't synthetic pesticides uh, and herbicides used, and that's a good thing. Uh, it's a really good thing for the farm workers, it's a really good thing for the farmers, it's a really good thing for the land. How about a nice chicken club sandwich make this fresh cooked chicken? You know, that's a, that's a nice idea, but I think what I'd really like is a burger. All right. My favorite meal to this day remains a hamburger and french fries. I had no idea that a handful of companies had changed what we eat and how we make our food. I've been eating this food all my life without having any idea where it comes from, any idea how powerful this industry is. And it was this, the idea of this world deliberately hidden from us. And I think that's one of the reasons why I became an investigative reporter, was to take the veil, lift the veil away from, you know, important subjects that are being hidden. <laughs> This new film series called Reactive Film is going to be quarterly and I'm going to be picking documentaries that are issue based and hopefully uh, starting a discussion about these important topics and this is a film series that is going to be a new platform for documentaries.